So I'm going to tell you my feelings about this. We will be doing a live stream, of course, to be more specific. But my gut feeling about this product is people overreacted to it. A lot of people said many bad things about the product. And it was really easy to get. If you wanted to get views, people always say, oh, you were trying to get views. Yeah, everyone's trying to get views. At least I'm honest about it. Then you would have said really bad things about this product. You would have said, hold the line. A bunch of lemmings holding the line while massive stores are buying this thing on mass. You, you don't know how stores operate. Many of you do not own a business. Many of you have never had an employee before. Many of you, and I'm not saying this to denigrate you. I'm just saying reality is most people will be employees all their lives. If you view this as from the employee or from the customer standpoint alone, you will never understand why this product sold out in 35 minutes. In fact, a lot of the lemmings still believe this product was pulled early. If you are going to pull a product, you don't pull it after 35 minutes. You pull it after five or six hours, right? Because if the problem is there's no sales to report to your CEO, which is a big problem when your CEO is expecting to see really good numbers, because that's why you did this, right? You don't pull a product. The product sold out. I'm almost positive the product sold out. The individual lemmings, they can hold the line as much as they want, but they have no power. They never had any power to hold the line. The line was always going to be crossed by the stores, the store owners, the big, big, big entities like eBay, like Amazon. Would it shock me if Amazon has $10 million of this product? No, it wouldn't shock me at all. I mean, they seemingly had unlimited time spiral remastered. As soon as it sells out, oh, we have another sale on. They seemingly have unlimited, they just have so much of this product, of all products, that would it surprise me if Amazon worked out a negotiation for the product slightly cheaper? No. Would it surprise me if eBay, who now owns TCG Player, which now owns Channel Fireball, they struck a deal for it? No. Because this type of interaction happens... A lot of you have no idea about Panini. When you buy cards from Panini, do you know how you buy the drops? They do something called like a Dutch auction and they lower the price and you can buy like 15 and lower the price. Most of you have no idea of like how buying cards actually works from a store model. It's not what you think it is. It's not like, oh, everyone. It's you go online to a website the website tells you the product, there's a release date, you can order online, and then the product goes down in price all the time until it sells out. That makes a very that makes the product always sell out because eventually the product will reach a price point so low that in, even a store like mine that's not interested in football products is like, okay, let's let's do it. I mean, at that point I can't say no. This product was always going to sell out, not because of what Alpha Investment said about the product, which I still disagree with. Alpha Investment is, if Magic goes under, the biggest winner is Flesh and Blood. And the only content creator bigger than like 10,000 on Flesh and Blood is Alpha Investment by a, a huge margin. He has a $1,000 promo card he sold to you guys. He has a $1,000 two-box Monarch first edition. Both of them worthless today he would benefit the most because he could continue to sell his $1,000 flesh and blood products. And you might be like, why is he not selling them right now? Because the game's not doing well. Let's just be honest. I mean, a lot of people are not going to be honest because they live in an echo chamber. The game's not doing well. Flesh and blood is not doing well. Most games are not doing well. Magic is not doing well right now because we are in a recession or inflationary times. The economy globally is horrific. And Magic cards... Flesh and Blood, Meta Zoo, Rudy promos. These are luxury items, right? Nobody needs another Rudy promo for $1,000 right now. Maybe you do, but the vast majority of consumers. So the idea that peep individual consumers could stand their ground in this product, you know, and would not sell out in 35 minutes is hilarious. Amazon can buy out the whole product in one click if they wanted to. And they probably wanted to. 
They're doing really good in Black Friday sales when they have game store owners like me ordering from them on multiple accounts. Uh, not like it's illegal. I have a business account and I have a personal account. The business account has my business address on it. So they're two different addresses. This product was always going to do well because the customer wasn't you. And I know Wizard Coast has an interesting policy about the customer was always the store. But no one understood this because they made it all about them. We live in a society where it's me, 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 free health care, free student loan forgiveness, free uh, unemployment checks, free um, ever. You know, I want to be a, I want free, 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 free. I want everything in my life to be free. Free rent, free mortgage. I don't want to pay my credit card debt. This is the society that young people live in today. Nobody's going to work hard. Nobody, like if you ask your store owner, have they bought secret layers direct from Wizard of the Coast to resell to their customer base? The answer for most store owners will be yes. That is the understanding I have. That is the understanding most store owners have. We live in an environment where to make money from these cool products, if there's a secret layer that we think will sell well, we buy it direct from Wizard of the Coast, we hold on to it, we hope that the market value goes up, and then we can sell it to our customer base eventually when the market price is higher, and that's our margin. Our margin is not from Wizard of the Coast, it is from the actual product that we hopefully predicted correctly going up in price. Seriously, go ask your local game store, have they ever sold a secret lair? And the answer is yes. In fact, Rudy has bought secret lairs from these stores that have misguessed the demand for like the flip lands, which is not very high, right? And that's why they had to sell it to him in pallets for pennies on the dollar. Again, my point, I'm, I'm just going to get to my point. I'm going to live stream tonight if you guys are at 5 p.m. Central Time. If you want to have an honest discussion about this, my point is very simple. This product was never meant for the consumer. This product was always meant for the Amazons, the Ebays, the TCG players now owned by eBay. It was meant for the Star City Games. It was meant for even local game stores. Because $1,000 to a local game, it's like a business. I always try to explain this to my employees. They never really understand this concept, especially around Christmas time. To an individual, $100,000 is a lot of money. Half a, half a million dollars is a lot of money. To a company, assuming the company makes millions of dollars, right? It's nothing. It's just another line on your taxes that's deductible as a store expense. Like when you are an individual magic player, it may be beyond your comp comprehension why this product is $1,000 or who would possibly have this type of money. But when you are a business and you're operating in the millions of dollars, right? A $1,000 product isn't that abnormal. In fact, in sports cards, the products begin at $1,000 and then move on to up to $30,000. For one box, Eminence is one box of 10 cards and it costs $30,000. That's the MSRP. Now, sometimes you get a discount so on. So again, depending on what store you buy from, it might be a little cheaper. So for somebody like Backyard Breaks, let's take them as an example, who's op used to opening 10000 National Treasure, $10,000 for National Treasure, 20000 for Flawless, and 30000 for Eminence, a box. Each box having 10 cards, by the way, for Eminence then what's a $1,000 product to them? That's like select, you know? <laughs> Which is not, it's not a bad product, but it's definitely not, I mean, yeah, I, select is kind of a weird product, but basically it's like NFL select for $1,000. Okay, that's not even considered like really high end for the sports card industry. So the product was not meant for the direct to consumer, even though it was sold that way. That's the one criticism I would have. I would probably just sell it via distributors, honestly, God. But the product sold out. I would probably guess 90% of the product went to stores of some type. I'm counting Amazon as a store. 
if I was a store like Amazon, I would just be like, whatever, like doesn't sell after half an hour, just put it in my, just put it on my tab. 